And again, thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed that editorial from Johnny Hughes, Johnny's Bite, with the latest as we have it. Please make sure you get interactive as always. And uh, we have TV3 Ghana. So go there, share the stream. Let's have some great conversations. We have uh, two issues to talk about, but also let's remind you we have cash out. It goes with the short code star 439 hash. And with star 439 hash, it means that you have to get money credited into your mobile money account. And as much as possible, please make sure that when you choose TV3, you also increase the number of stakes you have. And then also means that you get money credited into your mobile money account by increasing your chances when we do the draw. It's uh, the birthday of a sweet uh, mother of mine. Uh, and of course, uh, not my real mother, but uh, my adopted mother. So let me just say a happy birthday to you. And it's going to Hajia Fatiseidu Tamburo. You are the executive director of the Sun Foundation. You're based in the northern region, working for the whole of the northern Ghana. And it's coming from your husband, the former chief director of the northern region, Alhaji Al Hassan Isahaku, uh, and Sarah, uh, your daughter, and the rest of the family as well. I wish you all the best. Hajia Fatih Seidu Tamburo. Uh, you live in uh, Tamale, to be more specific. I wish you all the best for the day as well. And for those who have joined us, we're grateful. Please share the stream. I have Ibrahim Maliba. Ibrahim Maliba, how are you? Uh, could have been better, but uh, I'm okay. The black stars, the black stars are a problem. Your headache, eh? They should know that they are carrying the hopes of more than 30 million mm. Ghanaians. Uh, look at yesterday's game. Mm -hmm. Tap ins, just tap in. But you score very difficult goals in when you are there. Side. Just tap in, tap in. I'm, huh? I'm sure there was the Galamse effect. I don't know about that, but they don't drink our water here. Or they came and drank it, that's why. <laughs> so, the, you see, they should know. Because in our economy now, everything is haywire. It is them who will bring us some hope. And look at the way they are also playing. Because but they, they wanted a proper pitch. The pitch was done for them. It was done for them. So mm -hmm. now no complaints. But you see me, nah, I don't know. Because the teams I even support are just not performing. So what's your club side? No, but team? my you is underperforming. Ah, across, the across the focus is underperforming. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Then look at my black stars. Mm. Huh? So my weekends are not always good at all. I support Chelsea, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, and then of course the Black Stars. So at least uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, but, uh, they, they're doing very today, well. Today what is going to be exciting to me is that um, I'm joining my Catholic brothers and sisters to do a prayer. It's today they are doing it. And prayer. then they will walk. They will walk to, they will start from the cath uh, cathedral, mm -hmm. then walk to the Holy Trinity, uh, the, the church at the Flagstaff House. That's the Christ the King. Christ the King. Okay. Then we'll present uh, some petition to the president at the Flagstaff House. Mm. And uh, that's why I'm in a cassock today. What is close to a cassock today? <laughs> Jala beer. Mm. Anyway, and then also, how are you, sir? A lawyer? I'm doing well. Mm. Okay, knock. Now, Afuakwa also has joined us this morning. Uh, legal practitioner, another lawyer is here. We have three lawyers here. Uh, you look like you're ready for court. The legal year just resumed, so yeah. why are you rushing? I thought. Uh, oh, you... Action. 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 <laughs> All right, so um, lawyer Apia Danko, good yeah. morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. morning. So we have two things. Okay, you wanted to say something. Oh, yeah. I should go on. It's, we have two things good. to discuss, basically. It's um, the last working day of the of the week, so it means that we have to climax it well. I'd wanted to start with the Electoral Commission formally announcing we have over 40,000 polling stations, but it looks like the issues that have been raised by Maliba and, and all that for the Catholic vigil, so we'll do Galamseas first. <laughs> because there's been some good news. Uh, we have to be realistic. The president made some pointed um, issues to look forward to following the collapse of the labor agitations on their position of the Galamse menace. So the president had promised that he will increase military presence, including naval boats, to stop mining in water bodies, immediate suspension of mining in forest reserves. And we know that that is being uh, through that legal instrument. So uh, the action itself in terms of the implementation uh, has been stopped. We're told we'll find that out subsequently. And then when consequentially you continue, it says tougher prosecution, including four courts, all dedicated to illegal mining cases with plans for more. And then asking all presidential candidates to commit to a legal pact 
to fight illegal mining. And following through that, the president really, really, really acceded to that. So um, the deployment of the military has been swift. Already a number of actions have been undertaken, chamfines, etc. So now let's give you that dose of it. What was done? This is the laziest approach to combating any risk or threats to national security. You are saying that the report is that some 18 chamfans and a certain number of uh, heavy duty pumping machines have been destroyed. Yes. What is the figure that over the eight years, the state of Ghana has used intelligence to map out the Galamse uh, environment, to know how many people in which groups, on which river bodies, in which forest reserves are operating. Without that benchmark, you cannot actually determine that 18 in the first day is anything to write home about, because we don't have a baseline against which we want to measure this. That's the first point. The second point is that what is the time frame that the government is dealing with? Let's assume that in the short term we are dealing with six months. What political objectives have been set for the armed forces that by six months you should have destroyed 10% of Chamfans numbering 50,000 or 20% of uh, caterpillars numbering one million. You should have arrested X thousands of, you know, illegal miners mm. who are estimated to number X, Y, Z. Now, I I'm really baffled that with all the resources that we have invested in the state of Ghana, precisely in this government, with all the technologies that are being acquired for spying on political opponents, the state of Ghana cannot deploy resources to map out the, the, the Galamse environment so that today the government should have presented that with a better plan. Now, what we have is not a plan. It's just a political gimmick. Okay, so the Joint Tax Force has a clear and unambiguous mission of clearing all our water bodies off mining activities and at this time we are not looking at uh, whether the person has the required documents or not so far as you are on our water bodies or you are along the water bodies you are our target you are trying to clear off clear all of them from our water bodies to make sure that our water body return to the normal color that we are all looking for. How long are you going to be stationed within this district? Okay, so the immediate uh, assignment is estimated to last for about two weeks. Then after that, uh, we'll know what to, to do next. So that has been done. Lawyer Afokwa, it means that straight away. So how many men have been deployed and uh, what's the plan like? Because yeah. uh, the kennel or the flying kennel says that there's a, a, a pinpoint approach that will be used. Let me say a very good morning to yourself and to my senior uh, learned friends on the platform. <laughs> and extend the greetings of His Excellency, the Vice President, who is also the President in waiting of the Republic of Ghana, largely Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, to the good people of Ghana. In fact, he is moving across the length and breadth of this country in all humility and canvassing for support of the good people of Ghana uh, to propel him into the presidency as president to I lead Ghana. Give an invoice. Oh, sit down. Advertising for my, uh, what's his name? <laughs> He's allowed. Oh. <laughs> well, Please so go ahead. Senior. DM it senior, is possible. Senior, senior, senior are you intimidated? <laughs> you see, he when, says you are intimidated. You see, anytime, anytime, 
our brothers in the NDC hear the name Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. They, 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 they catch cool. They are in the state of catharsis. And I'm not surprised that Leonard, Leonard Senior is exhibiting the same symptoms on this, on, on, on this, <laughs> on this platform. Uh, Roland, Dr. Baumia will be president come December 7th, 2024. And there's nothing that will change what God has destined to happen in this republic. It is possible, like you rightly mentioned. Roland, on the issue of the illegal mining minutes and the resumption of the fight against illegal mining, i.e. Galamse in our water on our water bodies and in our forest reserves, and the president's acceding to the revocation of LI2462 that allows mining in the forest reserves, it's a good thing to do. I believe that uh, the intended strike of organized labor that was announced um, a week ago apparently was brought to a halt because of the actions that have been taken by the president in helping curb this menace of illegal mining and to enhance the restoration of our water bodies, lowering the turbidity levels of our various water bodies that have been depleted to this. Tube. This is an interim measure. I have always maintained that successive governments in the Fourth Republic have always used militarization and brute force in the fight against illegal mining. It has yielded not much results that we are all looking for. Like Kennel, uh, Tina do rightly mentioned that the interim operation is for, for, for two weeks. And after the two weeks... So this fight is only a two week? No, that is what the Kennel, who is the commanding officer of the operation, hoped. The resumption of operation clearing... Um, the illegal mining menace on our water bodies and our forest reserves is for two weeks. And after the two weeks, probably they will be stationed along... But what's the, the plan? Various... Since uh, you, you, no, are, you are should... getting the direct you know, you know, in terms information. Of, you know, in terms of military operations, it is the, it is the security official that has their operational schemes and their operational drawings. This, they, this is not for public consumption because in operational settings, they have an operational schedule and they are following through to that. And as far as um, raiding... Our, our water bodies of the illegal mining menace is concerned is for two weeks and our forest reserves and from there probably they will be stationed along the various areas to be able to monitor and ensure that our brothers and sisters will not come back to the field. Last time I was here with you I mentioned that President Rawlings used the same brute force, President Kufour used the same brute force of militarization, President uh, uh, John Ivan Satami also used similar force, President John Dramani Mahama in 2013 use the same uh, brute force and militarization in setting up the interministerial committee on illegal mining nana akufuado use an enhanced measures of militarization setting up of operation vanguard operation hot one two and the likes how many operations have been set up operation one Hort. operation 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 vanguard the, the military were redrawn okay. and the police handed yeah. handed over to and the there's hot the operation hot one hot two. two and currently if this is this is there was galam stop two no, operation yeah, galam stop two in addition and so with four. all this brute force so this is a fifth one absolutely and it's still yielding that the not it's not yielding the necessary results that we are all looking for as a country it comes to the fact that there is something that we need to hmm. do and this is why i am all for the policy proposition of dr mahmoud baumia in this presidential elections I believe that Kino Kafuakwa coming from a mining community and knowing the various levels of... You come uh, from a mining yes, community? Yes, I was Which... born and bred in Obuasi. I was born... Bred so you're in a miner? Newark. You have a mining a company? Miner. I don't have a mining company. But I am, I am, I am someone... Have you operated a mining concession before? I haven't. I am, I am someone from a mining community and I understand the rudiments of this enterprise that they go in. You see, those sitting on the water body score to, to, to that you saw the military burning and pulling off um, um, this uh, uh, Ghana-made dredging boat, sit on the water bodies and pollute the water bodies daily. As an environmental scientist myself, I, we know that water has a way of regenerating itself because of biological housing demands in these water bodies. And once the pollutants exceed the BOD of every water, then the contamination becomes uh, uh, perennial. It can't regenerate back. But once you are able to stop the pollutants, the constant pollution of the water bodies and the biological housing demand of these water bodies exceed the pollution, then it has a way of replenishing and regenerating itself and restoring its uh, um, um, quality and that system. That is what in the, in, the, in, the, in the coming two weeks, if the military are able to rid off this uh, illegal miners sitting on our water bodies, we'll be able to see the water uh, regenerate and the turbidity levels drop in that regard. It comes to, uh, to show that these this, our brothers and sisters in this enterprise need capital injection in their 
in, in their in their way of doing things to do what yes when they have legal concessions you know people have legal concessions license concessions from the minerals commission from the ministry of lands and natural resources but they don't have the capital adequacy to be able to uh, invest in this one and that they partner with foreigners to be able to finance the operations which is illegal which is illegal because the mining and minerals act of 2006 as 703 category states that small scale mining is the preserve of Ghanaians. So once it is a preserve of Ghanaians, no foreigner has a stake in the, in the small-scale mining sector. So if you have a legitimate small-scale mining license and you involve foreigners in mining, then it means that you are engaging in illegality. Another illegality is this uh, small China people. Uh, they, they, we call them small China. Those our brothers and sisters, they are local Ghanaians. But the method they use, they call it small China because they bring out the... Uh, you the seem to know the terms very well. I am from a mining town. Yes, sir. I have stated this. I am from a mining town. And this small China they use, they use these pumping machines. After the excavators have brought up the sand or the particles or the gravel pack, they use them in shooting them directly with the, the way blankets. The you're saying is like ground. you know. I know. I understand. Have you undertaken mining before? I haven't. But I'm telling you I'm from a mining town. And I am an environmental scientist. I have done a, a lot of research in this. My first degree research was in mining. My, uh, my uh, uh, international relations master's degree was on illegal, illegal mining and foreign, foreigners' uh, participation in this sort of enterprise. So I've done extensive research in this sector and I understand the rudiments of this. So when people are jamming everything on board and trying to lash it out, we need to understand it. What Dr. Baogian is proposing is that when you, those using these pumping machines and pumping these sediments back into the river bodies, need capital because once they get they, they get a the capital in the invest world they engage in sustainable mining absolutely once the natural the, the mineral resource uh, is it um the natural resource bank is established to fund this minute no one will be giving capital without due process and once you have a, a, a mining license and you are going to mine responsibly then you get government support or financial support to be able to procure equipment to be able to mine so, uh, responsibly and sustainably i believe the interim measures that government is undertaking is to sustain the uh, to, to sustain the, the devastation that is going on to keep it in the in the short term but in the medium term we need to rethink how we can inject capital into the system make sure that we convert abandoned mining pits into community mining schemes to be able to employ more more and more people so that we create job we create wealth and get benefit for our country so that we own our natural resources as a people again once those with legitimate licenses also need capital to be able to buy equipment so that we can also inject capital in that sector taking away the foreigners participation in that sector that if you are a foreigner and you want to do this you go through the gipc process of bringing in the liquid that you want come and take a large-scale mining concession go through the rudiments and the processes that goldfields ghana limited newmont and ashanti goldfields and the big firms are doing so that you also operate in that se sector okay. i believe that the president should be applauded that he signaled that LI2423 will be sent back to parliament for parliament to decide on its revocation. That is a good step to do. We should also commend pres the president again for um, listening to the plight of the ordinary people and assuring the good people of Ghana in the, in, in the, in the renewed fight against illegal mining mm. with showing the level of commitment that he's shown recently. Not thinking about elections, but thinking about our I, country I, I, and I, the people I, of this I, I have loved your exposition because even though we've talked about Galamse before, you've never... Uh, spoken so knowledgeably about the sector like today and you, i think i love that you, you don't really give me the chance to, to to be able to explain and you can give us chance and we all go into okay, this because your so knowledge that, so that you work we, for the minerals commission and so that but, we all understand the uh, what, what, what do you make of all this because it looks like a very direct countermeasure which could have been undertaken over the last two years because uh, from the last that i checked by 2022 the ghana water company was complaining about the turbidity levels, et cetera. And all of a sudden we have this ongoing and it had to take a lot of pressure for government to do this. What do you make of this, yes. uh, lawyer? Uh, so let me wish you a lovely view, it's a good morning. Yeah. Wish my own brother, uh, so Abankwa was a very good friend. He's uh, still a very good friend of mine <laughs> when we were in the MPP, when I was in the MPP. <laughs> when you were in the MPP, he was, he was he's your he's friend. He's still my very good friend, yeah. yeah. Abankwa, you guys are friends. Yeah, very, very good friend. Yo. <laughs> And uh, my own senior, uh, senior uh, Amaliba, Amaliba who, who was my senior in Legon <laughs> Faculty of Law and then also at the law school. Always a pleasure. Uh, in spite of the knowledge expected by my brother here, I must, I must disagree vehemently with some very key things he, he, he said, which I think won't help us. He, he seems to suggest that one of the reasons why 
Galamsi or people are mining in the river bodies is, is because of lack of capital. Uh, I find that statement very worrying because uh, excavators and caterpillars require a lot of capital. And so what really has happened is because of uh, their exposure to capital, they've taken the illegal mining to a devastating level. Because if my brother here really grew up in Obuase, they must understand that in those days, when they, what we what what was called gal galamsi was simply people going to the killings dam. There are some people going to the killings dam because that's that's the, the, the killings dam because when Kofu was fighting against Galamsi, mm. he was fighting against people stealing from the killings dam, not digging yeah. deadly pits. Uh, so, the, so they yeah. were ex exploiting the already used exactly because the abandoned places exactly. of the regular miner. Galamse went into these crazy levels after 2012, when really people who have been granted all my manner of licenses, license prospective, decided to use the license in a manner different from. Now, the major reason why we failed in the fight against Lam Gal Galamse is a fundamental lack of commitment to just enforce the laws. Yeah, it's, it's a fundamental lack of commitment to just enforce the laws. And uh, what our president is doing and the burning of the... It, once again, is the quintessential Nanadus doing something to represent something. I don't know. You mean he's doing fear gun Yeah, he's doing something to represent something. Uh, no commitment. Because you, you, uh, you ask a very good question because if really there was commitment uh, since about 2018 we formed the international committee what has the president done even in the light of the report that was granted him also my brother made a very good point about as in my brother uh, uh, here about the long-term strategy because it's a very short-term fight now what's the long-term strategy now to get and understand the long-term strategy is to understand and appreciate why we are where we are at the moment because once again i've said here that when it comes to the issue of galamsi i've never for me i don't think the issue has to do with uh feel uh, what's called lack of the laws or the policies because there's a clear policy a clear regime concerning how our minerals are to be utilized you, you, you understand you are simply not supposed to mine on river bodies Ordinarily, he and he's an environmentalist, like he's saying, if you love the environment, that you should not even consider allowing mining in forest reserves. Yeah, 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 son. Enforce the law. So what you are saying is that the prerequisites or the guidelines and the watchword for you taking that prospective license or that license itself is for you to mine sustainably. The regime, that's what I say, the regime, there's really the only issue I have with the regime is I, I think that the punishment regime where people have flouted the law is too lenient because of the the effect of mining unsustainable uh, unsustainably like 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 we are all seeing now it, it, that, that, that 10 years is we should be thinking about life imprisonment something that is deterrent enough to deter people from breaching the law because the galamse issue is simply a criminal act and when you talk about criminal act, I, I, I don't know why we are thinking about uh, uh, negotiating with criminals yeah, just enforce the law. Just you see, uh, one of the fundamental issues is weaknesses within the uh, minerals commission, the institutions that are meant to regulate mining. So you take the forestry commission, for example. They have forestry guards, not so, who are armed. Who are armed? Should we not be thinking about going the same route with minerals commission? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 because if no, no, it will be effective because if at the end day, you, 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 when it comes to the protection of our of our forest resources, and even that is renewable. You know, the forest resources are even renewable. Mm -hmm. you, you, you mm -hmm. Now these are not renewable, mm -hmm. and, and 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 beyond the fact that they are not renewable, if we allow them to be uh, exploited in an unsustainable manner, like is happening, we all know the consequence. All of our lives will be at peril. Now, because of the impact of unregulated mining and because of the impact of a failure to enforce the law, to monitor and enforce the law, I think we need to look at the institutions, the institutions that have been mandated by law to more or less regulate mining. And I'm saying that unless and until we have something similar to what the Forestry Commission has,
proper guards, mineral commission guards, who will guard a man yes, and go around and monitor and have and be given the power. You know why I'm, I'm laughing? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Then, then because then, and, 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 and beyond that, commitment from the politicians. Because I know among the things listed is the president saying that he, he wants the presidential candidates to sign a pact. And, and that is shocking. Because one of so the. So it means he wants John Mahama, Alan, and everybody the, the, to the sign a pact. Whilst was... he's the executive president. No, but that is even. even it means that he doesn't even understand the job of the president. Because one of the fundamental jobs of the president is to protect, enforce, you understand, mm -hmm. defend the constitution of Ghana. Defend the laws of Ghana. So if you are going to sign a pact, if you if you require that people sign pacts, that suggests that they are going to do the the, the job, they are campaigning. Uh, then there's a problem. But but you see, it's it, it it's a symptom of one of the fundamental issues in the, in in our politics. The fact that our politicians just want the power. They just want the power. They don't want to work. They do, because Alan Chamantin doesn't need to sign any pact to show commitment to enforcing the law. So it means and Alan will not sign? He, he doesn't need to sign. Because my, uh, my argument is that you are campaigning to be granted a job. Mm. Now, pay the job, you are, you, you, one of the fundamental jobs that you, are, you ought to do as a president, one, is to protect, defend the laws of Ghana. You, you, you understand? Two, you are a trustee. And because you're because you'll be a trustee, mm. and because you'll be a trustee, I feel a fiduciary duty will be placed on you. There'll be a, an obligation on you to, to, to protect. So if you require, if you are saying that they require a pact, that means that you yourself won. The job that we gave you, you you slept. And clearly he slept. And two, you do not believe. Or you think that you no, know, that that that, uh, that reason of the new patriotic party that oh one of the reasons why we won't fight Galamsey is because whilst we are fighting, so while the president is doing his job as president, he thinks that he won't do that job because somebody who wants to be president will be undermining. But you took an oath to do that job. You took an oath to defend and protect the constitution of Ghana. You took an oath to dedicate yourself to the well-being of the people of Ghana. Must you the thought that people must sign pacts? To do the job for which you are campaigning, for us to grant you, is a problem. And it is a symptom of the lack of commitment on the part of politicians mm? to do the job for which they campaign. And I'm just I'm saying that right now, if, if, if it, it is clear for me, it is beyond contestation, that for the majority of our politicians, the reason why political authority in this, can, in the, in this country is failing, that one of the reasons why political authority is losing credibility is because they just want the power they just want the power they want power they want political authority but they do not want to work because if they really want to work mm. and that's why you see a lot of confusion in their propo the proposed solutions in the fight against galamse alan chamati is saying that one he's going to enforce the law mm. he said he's going to ban he's going to he says ideally we should have a moratorium exactly and he's, he's he's also saying mm. that he's going to look at the regime itself so that where you are you you you, you flout the law on unregulated mining and you are caught it's not about 10 years life imprisonment unless we find something very deterrent unless we are willing to enforce the law simply enforce the law then this battle against Galamsey will be lost i like the way you point the table pinpointly but, but yeah because anyway, we uh, pro, uh, dr um jonathan asantiotri has joining us uh, is joining us from cape coast uh, he he lectures with the ucc but also is a political analyst and thank you for joining us i'll be with you shortly um let me just uh, see you and then we'll thank you. okay oh i hope you're well so just be on so um just to summarize what lawyer pia Dankwa is saying lawyer maleba he's saying that the president is now trying to get the buy-in of prospective presidents or candidates who want to be prospective presidents before he's able to do a job that he's voted into power to do. What do you make of that? By telling them to sign a pact, among many of the detailed things he wants to do so, in the interim to let resolve me say the issue. Good morning to your viewers. But Afoko says something about Baumia. And for me, I sometimes uh, sit back and wonder how John Mahama, former President John Mahama, was able to trick the MPP to give us a weak candidate. If it was Alan Chiramate, I can tell this election would have been difficult. If it were Ken 
at Japan. It would have been difficult. But John Mahama's statement made the MPP vote for a northerner, not because they have the north at heart, but just to dispel John Mahama's statement. And now they've provided us with a weak candidate. So we are happy. Now, um, see, this girl I'm saying issue. And I heard Afuaka say we should applaud <laughs> uh, Akufado. Why should we applaud Akufado? Why not? What did he do for us to be applauding him? This man put his presidency on the line. And look at the turbidity of our water, water bodies. And because organized labor, having been bribed, has decided to drop their strike, you say we should applaud Nana Akufado. For what? For what? For what? Because you have been able to ensure that organized labor, having taken money from the back, <laughs> have dropped their demonstration, that means that we should applaud Nana Akufado. Why? Look, Nana Adudanko Akufado alone, as an individual, can fight Galamse and cut it down to more than 70 percent why, mean, I, why I mean, if he wants if he wants why am i saying this why is that a conditional statement he knows those who are doing the galamse he knows them by name he knows one to me and he knows to, to to the extent that he went out to praise one to me and say he wasn't doing galamse his ministers dc is are neck deep in this galamse uh, 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 conundrum. And that's how, how come it's difficult for the party to fight Galamse. You remember party Hiensika? Recently you heard their health uh, 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 Dr. Free, are you? Are you, are you? Huh? Mount the platform to say that they were not going to ban Galamse. Um, you heard statement from the Atakwa MP. So if you have Government officials, government appointees, neck deep in the in the in the in the Galamse activity. On what basis will you be calling for presidential candidates to be signing? Are there is the presidential candidate is it the presidential candidates who appointed those ministers? So the back stops of Nana Adudanka Kufado. Is he ready to do it? He's not ready to do it. And so, for me, I think that it's a straightforward matter. Apply the laws, like he said, and ensure that persons who are found engaged in Galamse are punished. I heard this morning that some excavators have been... Uh, 18... Uh, 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 excavators have been um, bent. 18 chamfines, 10 pumping machines, and then an excavator also bent. Uh, so you can see some of the pictures or the, the interview we showed from that interaction there with, um, what's the Kedal's name? Tenabu or? Eric, Eric Tenabu. Mm -hmm. The question is, Tenadu. Tenadu. Okay. the question is, having impounded those Galamse machines, as reported, where are the people operating those Galamse machines? Where are they? Where are those people? So if you have machines, were the machines there without individuals? Were the machines there without people? So how come that you impounded those machines, but you couldn't arrest the people who were operating the machines? It tells you that they would have given those people tip off to go, and then the machines will be impounded. The fight against Galamse is a simple one. Let government show commitment that it is ready to fight it. Let the government look inwards and then deal with some of its own appointees who are engaged in those acts. And for me, Galamse would have been a thing of the past. Well, certainly. Um, Dr. Jonathan Santiago, what do you make of this? Uh, now, we have a commitment made. We have 
military people or personnel who have been sent to those areas. That means that it satisfied the key stakeholders, both political, the other stakeholders like labor, and then the generality of the voting public or the public in itself. That's a good thing, right? I mean, policy-wise and strategically. Well, Roland, let me say good morning to you and to your viewers and colleagues in the studio. Um, I think we are not doing anything different from what we've been doing in the past. Um, we started different, and therefore we will not get any result. If the president is doing this as part of satisfying organized labor and so on and so forth, I think this approach, we've seen that before. I have proposed, if we are really serious about fighting Galamsein, I have given some five propositions. First of all, uh, I know small-scale miners believe that they are doing the legal thing and therefore they should be allowed to operate, yes. Uh, but the nation is in crisis. Therefore, we need to attach some kind of uh, importance, more importance than the usual thing that we do. Why am I saying so? Uh, it is often said in the local palace that because we have too many smokes within the system, we do not mm. know who is the right, yes. Therefore, put a moratorium or a ban, a temporary ban on it, but don't go and sleep. Ask, that's the first. Secondly, ask all miners to evacuate all machines, whether in the water bodies, mm. in the forest, whatever. Everybody should evacuate. Now, you definitely have people who will not do so because they think that they are politically connected. Now, the third thing is that you are now going to use the drone or satellite, get some satellite images to give you real life situation, right, of the forest reserve and that of our water bodies. So you have the data. The fourth thing is that you are now going to allow the military, whether police joint operation to go on the very fields that we know. Now, I had the president admonishing the military that they shouldn't go out there and be, be influenced. I think that the president is virtually thinking that these soldiers are moral agents and therefore they should go out there and do the right thing. They have the potential to do the right thing but do not give them the benefit of the doubt. That is the fourth proposition. And mm. that is that all soldiers, military, police, in that operation must have body cams. Everybody must have a body cam on him or herself. The fifth thing is that with this body cam, what is, what is the importance of that? We must have a central digital center where these operations that will be done or that are done through the body cam will be recorded. Therefore, no soldier will have the opportunity of asking questions in order to be influenced. The same thing which is uh, more or less like a query of the president's you know, decision to allow the military. What is the mandate? What is the operational mandate of the military going to the fields? Do we know? Because, for example, when the American military, the armed forces were about to go and capture Osama bin Laden, they were given express instruction. Mm -hmm. So what is the express instruction or command of the military? Are they going there to shoot and kill? Are they going there to arrest? Are they going there to destroy ma the machines also and so forth? We do not know. Or they are just going there to stop. Now, I heard one colleague in the studio say that, by the time you get there, they will have had all the information and they will have left. That's the more reason why, if we really want to fight this particular canker, that is, this is not the approach that we should go with. Yes, it could solve some. It could create some temporary relief for all of us. But in actual fact, the pull and the push factors, when it comes to the Gallum say, you see, are two, uh, for lack of a better word, you just cannot place a finger on. Because you see, this, you have, this situation is economically driven. And you know that our forests, our water bodies have been devastated. 
that because of the monetary gains, the monetary gains associated with that, that is the main challenge. But the point too is that we need to exist as human beings within the environment that mm. we find ourselves. Therefore, all those who are destroying the environment, not the effect not only today, the effect not only tomorrow, but we are virtually denying the existence of the next generation. And I think that that is murderous. Okay. And so we need to treat this, this particular issue as right. a kind of those who are committing murder against the larger population. And that is the best way to go. Okay. Now, you see, if the president had hearkened to the voice of burning and burning, and if he had done so, and he would have had the opportunity of not dealing with colleagues who are MPP. Now, what that would have meant is that if the military is going to the Ashanti region, therefore, you don't have to take military who are in Ashanti region or close to Ashanti region. You must take people who have no, who have nothing to lose and who are bent on ensuring that the nation, our reserves, the water bodies are protected. Right. I do not know where they are taking them from. Okay. So these are some of the things. If we, if we really want to fight Galamasi, because the commitment on the part of the president, the vice president, and all the, you know, the, uh, the appointees of the mm. president uh, is not there. Because ask yourself, from the, the early period of last month, that was the time organized labor, UTAG and co began threatening what did the president do? Nothing. As if he had not heard it. Then you have the, the youth going on rampage. And then they are arrested. What about the focus of that particular demonstration? Mm. Have we lost it? All and right. it got to a point, 11th hour, where organized labor had to chicken out. And that in itself, Roland, that in itself is a lost opportunity, not only for today's politics, and the politicians that we allow them to do things that are unthinkable. But we have equally lost the opportunity for tomorrow. All right. Because that is just very unfortunate. Even if we had gone for a strike for just a day or two, I think that the president will have taken organized labor seriously, not only today, but for future president as well. That power, that opportunity is gone just because of some people's you know, vested so, so, so you are saying that for the sake of posterity and a precedent being said, they've lost that opportunity, right? Certainly. All right. So, okay. So I already have a number of uh, people on our stream who seem to love the submissions that have been made, particularly from Do Dr. Uh, Jonathan Santiotri. So Kusi Pano says that a very intellectual submission from everybody, especially the doctor. And money, new money, interestingly says they are burning the excavators because they don't want us to trace them and see those that they belong to because... Uh, he says, just like what John Mahama is saying, you, you tackle the issue being the cause of the issues and other roots, not those who are just mere perpetrators found on the ground. That leads me to my question. As somebody who is very experienced in this, whether with your mining experiences and all, all that, if you take a look at what is being done, let's say if we take your concession and we go there, we go and burn this, what then gives me the assurance that if I go and put another chamfai on this at the same spot, I, I cannot continue to mine, for example? Yeah, <clears throat> certainly. Like I rightly mentioned, that the Sassu government in the Fourth Republic has always used militarization in the fight against illegal mining. But the solution, as far as this illegal mining mandate is concerned, stands more than this. We have thousands of people who have been convicted and sentenced to prison custodies, serving various jail terms in our prisons as a result of illegal mining. But it is still not deterrent enough and they are still doing because of the livelihood matter. Roland, what we are seeing today, the renewed fight against illegal mining with an additional deployment of military to uh, clamp down on people mining on our water bodies and our forest reserves. This is an interim measure of, from government to be able to sustain our environment in the interim going forward we need to rethink as a people 
Because we have used this in the fourth report in the last 20, 30, 40 years. This has been the tool that we have been using. And it is not yielding the results that we are talking about. Uh, Dr. Ankara was mentioning that uh, he was expecting a total ban. In 2017 you to 20... Dr. Santiotri. Sorry, Dr. Santiotri. In 2017, March 2017, to I think uh, November 2018 or 19, 2018, there was a total moratorium on all forms of small scale mining. What Ghana. was the outcome? The outcome is what we are seeing today. No. No, what was the immediate outcome? The immediate outcome was that yet the, the, water, the, the water bodies regenerated, our, our, our flora and fauna regenerated, the biodiversity began to regenerate perfect. But immediately, uh, standardization and all those things, the, the lifting of the moratorium is what we are all cry, crying so back again. So how come we got here? Absolutely. If, 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 so, if you are saying there was an outcome so, being the regeneration of the vegetative cover and the water bodies. So this is why I am saying that the policy proposition of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, as somebody coming from a mining community, is the way to go. Is that one, he's proposing two things. And in all the proposals of Dr. Baumia, I see these two things as the main pillars in the fight against illegal mining or raiding our country of all forms of small scale mining, illegal small scale mining is concerned. Two, is to uh, invest more in geological survey to identify more potential good belts that we can put our people in this sector into. So that they can mine and mine sustainably. If they know that this belt is viable, this, this belt is richer. Roland, do you know the reason why they still mine along these water bodies? Let the geologists tell you that in this alluvial gold mining, it is the, uh, uh, um, the, the distance close to the water bodies that contains this alluvial depots, the, high, the, the highest, the, uh, more, it's more richer in gold than almost all the, the, the other areas. So, and in, in terms of the licensing regime, in terms of streams, you are to mine not, uh, not less than 30 meters away from the river body. And miners knowing very well that these deposits closer to the river bodies and closer to these streams are the richest, the temptation is that they will find ways of going there because they need the money. But if you are investing in them, giving them the, the tools they need, the capital to invest in it, and asking them not to go there because it is controlled, they will not go there and you can be able to control that sort of regime. Because if you are going to rent excavators to go and do the mining, and you know that going closer to, away from the river body, you get few good or few nuggets, where lies that at the end of the day, it cannot even pay off your fuel and the, rental, the, the rent of your machines. Will you go there? But going so, close so, to the stream. So the panacea is? The panacea, it's that we all invest in the Mineral Development Bank or accept the Mineral Development Bank proposition for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. To, to that will invest be after the election. After the election. So to, from now to the election, now the military, we cannot do some now, of these things. Now the military is, is, is we, are, we, are, we are in the end of resources. Let's, let, 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 let's all face the fact. Now, investing in the geological survey of Ghana and um, taking away the VAT composition as far as geological investigations are concerned and explorations are concerned in Ghana is the way to go so that we can identify more potential belts. We can get more capital injected into the system so that we can license our people and make sure that they mine sustainably and follow due process as far as the covenants and the tenets of the licensing regimes are concerned. Is the way to go. If we begin to vilify this sector of ours and allow foreigners to come and take over our natural resources, as has been the rudiment, the regime, as far as our country is concerned from the pre-colonial era up to this time, where lights our, our laws permit that the state Ghana takes a free 10% carried interest in all forms of large-scale mining in Ghana. This is peasant. It's little. Where lights the investors take away over 90% of it, it's chicken. The proposition that we begin to take over 100% of our natural resources so that the resources stay with us, the revenue stay with us, capital flies and the lies, we benefit as a country, is the way to go. Let us depoliticize the issue of illegal mining. That is why I believe the president is calling for, um, how, what, what do you call it, that all, all presidential aspirants should sign a pact. Because we've seen it before. During the 2017-2019 fight against illegal mining with the introduction of a moratorium, we saw our brothers, uh, Honorable Amalibes uh, 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 party going through uh, campaigning in mining communities and mining sites with Kwekubuahe and the likes. I could see one paper and those people following suit and pro promising the miners that when they come, they are not going to use the military, they are not going to use the police against them, they are going to allow them to mine, they are going to allow them to do these things. And once you are doing this, it, 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 it is not necessary in character. And this is why we are here today. Roland, we need to all to commit to the fight and regularization of this sector and nip the issue of illegalities in the bag to protect our bi biodiversity, to protect our water bodies, and to be able to generate the wealth that we need as a country. Look at the number of people in this small-scale mining sector. Millions of people are in, in this sector. 
the local the local economies within these mining communities are benefiting from these undertakings of these mining uh, operations going on and i believe that it is something that has come to stay because the Ghanaian has a hidden expertise as far as mining is concerned and no one can stop mining in ghana but what we can do is to stop the illegalities associated with mining and make sure that we promote sustainable mining as is being proposed by dr mahmoud baumia and i believe that mm. Ghanaians should buy in into the policy proposals the manifesto proposition of dr mahmoud baumia to be able to ensure that going forward mm. we move away from the brute force militarization mm. we, right. we are able to condone you know a gentleman revenue. called dennis dennis from where i'm just getting a message from one called dennis he said he worked for you on a concession me at Inchurife near oh. wasa akore I, I, do, I don't know any dennis really i don't know any dennis mm. did, did you did you operate in wasa akore so i don't know the name you are mentioning really okay then he says he doesn't know you all. So certainly, like I'm mentioning. All right. You this is, you, you are done. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm London. No, no, it's That's okay. I should, think my question threw you off here. You, let's forget no, about it. Please. We should, we should uh, follow the, the policy proposition of Dr. Bambu. And like you've senior, you, you've senior said that the organized labor took bribes. Took see, bribes no, 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 and, and no, called no, no, on the please, demonstration. No. Did they take money? You've, you've made your point. Did they take bribes to, to no, organize you, the strike action? Certainly, we should not vilify the organized labor and be able to push our country forward. Now, it is a useless government that if it is confronted with an issue will be referring to its opponents conduct in seven or eight years ago why why if why, is that, why is that useless if koku Boahi and co mm. went around mm. aiding and abetting the commission of a crime but that's why he's trying to say and i've put it he's a lawyer but, but within uh, there's the tenets of the law did he aid and abet? yeah that's what he's saying if you if you tell people to go and uh, because and because them. because to be truthful there is even another video and this is the latest of koku boy on youtube that's what i'm saying that, that still go back that's what i'm business. saying that if you are a government with all the machinery and you think that people have committed crimes and you cannot use the machinery to stop them and you come and sit on national radio and blame your opponents seven years ago six years ago and you are in your eighth year then i think that you are not fit to be called a government because you are supposed to act in the interest of the people but the tuc or the organized labor have betrayed the trust of the people of this country why and posterity will never forgive them particularly particularly the leadership of the organized labor why there is what is called intergenerational equity and that principle says that you should develop or uh, transform your resources in such a way as to not to compromise the ability of future generations to be able to also exploit that resources. Now you have our resources being destroyed. Forest is being destroyed. Water bodies are being destroyed. Eh? The land, the land, the land is being destroyed. And you have decided to embark on demonstration so that the President will correct all these things. At the eleventh hour, you chicken out. And I agree with the UCC, UCC professor that because these are very serious matters affecting the state, you should have at least gone for demonstration for a day, or if not a day for eight hours, so as to tell the government that it needs to wake up and deal with this menace. But what did they do? They chicken out. So, future generations, yet unborn, will suffer from the menace, and that will be a, a case against them. They had all the opportunity to ensure government listens, or government does the right thing. They failed. Now, this measure that the government has given, some are yet to even start this issue of a, a bill going to parliament. What if government reneges on it? And this government has done so many of those things. Government have promised workers that they will pay their uh, emoluments or whatever grievance they have. Then government reneges. Then workers go back on strike. This government is not noted for keeping its promise. That's the point I want to make. So you should have at least waited, and I'm talking to organized labor, 
to see that some of the things have kick-started. Because if you, you held the, 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 the president's balls, this was the time for you to squeeze it, for him to ensure that he does what he said he would do when he said to all of us this, that, that this was the this, this the was time the time to, to and, squeeze the president's yes, balls. balls because he has told us that you put his presence on the line that didn't change anything but this was a, a clear opportunity but knowing what they have done to this economy and knowing that they have stashed money in their homes and i can give you the case of the past case this money is, and i can tell you this money is, that they have stashed in their homes can literally buy every Ghanaian. And if you are a Ghanaian and you are not cogni co cogni co you, are, you don't have your cognitive, cognitive abilities up there, you fall for some of these things. And I'm not surprised that the, 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 the organized labor mm. failed mm. To, to, to live up to their expectation. All right. Um, Dr. Santiotri, we, we know that there's a, there's a key issue of the electoral commission uh, saying that they are going to do printing of ballot uh, papers. Uh, so at the end of the day, the NDC said that um, they should hold on, etc. But then that also means that we're just closer to the election. Uh, if you take a look at all the events that have happened in the immediate past or just recently, it also means that the electoral commission is pushing forward. The election is closer than we think, 57 days. What do you make of all these um, events ushering us into the main election? Well, uh, before I go to that subject, um, in the studio, uh, I think, um, I don't know. The lawyer lawyer Afwakwa. Enoch okay. Afwakwa. Yes. Um, <clears throat> the, the attempt by members of government or the assigns of government to exculpate Dr. Baumia, you know, from the mess that we all find ourselves, I think is disingenuous. And he said we should not politicize that. But you see, when you go on that tangent, telling us that, oh, Dr. Baumia is bringing this, bringing that. I mean, you see, sometimes it's as if uh, we don't really know what we are about. And it is just sometimes quite appalling. I have heard Dr. Baumia and Ed Asain say that he is the best vice president ever to have happened. Okay, so if we have to agree to that, that's okay. But the point is that if we, are all, we all find ourselves in a mess, spearheaded by the current government, of which you are the vice president, you cannot be the best vice president because you are part of the whole mess. The idea of that LI in itself that was generated and applied tells me that the entire government have not been, they are not committed to fighting Galapagos. Because when you were coming out with that particular proposition or that LI, what were you thinking? That these people were going to take their licenses and go and sleep? What were you thinking? And where were you thinking that they were going to work? Is it not the forest? Is it not? I mean, so sometimes you just don't get the genuineness of heart in mm. some of the things that they do and say. Mm. We should all wait for the Tabamia to win the elections before we tackle this particular menace. I don't think that that is, that is good enough. The EC, um, I think that I listened to uh, Johnny's bite this morning. Or I think in the news, it appears that the EC is saying that that communication out there that they are about to pin the ballot papers, I think that communication is, is false. Uh, they say it's, it's inaccurate. So if that is the case, then it means that it is much ado about nothing. We do not have any issue at hand. But if that is not the case, then uh, it's, it's, it's quite appalling, to say the least, that you do not have a final register which you have promised the, the stakeholders that you're going to do so in the next few weeks or so. If you don't have that, on what basis do you tend to print the ballot? So you will see that day in, day out, you are creating more suspicion for yourself. And obviously, the, the main opposition, that is the NDC, will not allow this thing to slide. Especially, they still don't have trust in the EC. Why? Because of the nature of 
the appointment that have been done over there. So it's as if they are always marking them boot for boot. And I think that in itself will ensure that we do have a free, a fair and a transparent election. That, for me, is the way to go. So um, with respect to that particular question, I am inclined to accept the view that the EC say that that communication out there is false, and I want to subscribe to that. Other than that, I think that what the NDC is saying it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Afakwa, lawyer, yeah. what do you make of the EC's uh, position now? It looks like we're going ahead. Over 40,000, uh, is it 975? Yeah, police stations. Mm. Yeah, certainly. The EC has a constitutional mandate um, to organize elections in this country. And there is a constitutional injunction as far as the, the operations of the Electoral Commission is concerned that the Electoral Commission cannot be subject to the control directions of any, any person in, 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 in the line of its duties or in pursuing its mandate. So certainly once the Electoral Commission has its own calendar and schedules, I believe that the Electoral Commission engages political parties who are major stakeholders in these electoral processes. And in printing ballot papers, as has always been the, the, the ritual, the Electoral Commission um, conducts the statistics with the political parties as far as the number of uh, ballot papers that will be printed per constituency in accordance with their due process is concerned. So the political party agents that will be at the various printing house of the electoral commission um, to monitor the printing of the ballot papers will know that this constituency we are printing let's say uh, twenty thousand ballot papers uh, in excess of about ten percent plus or minus so that it will take care of some uh, unforeseen circumstances and the likes all these accounting or statistics are done ahead before the final start of the printing of ballot papers are concerned and we in the new patriotic party are already waiting we are waiting to see that the Electoral Commission pursues this mandate diligently in accordance with due process, as has always been the case, that they will go through with us the statistics of the uh, ballot papers that will be printed per consti every constituency, both uh, parliamentary and presidential, because mm. we are filing parliamentary, we are filed parliamentary candidates across all the 275 constituencies, and we are waiting that our parliamentary candidate become successful in these elections. An election is a process, and this process starts with the printing of ballot papers. And as far as accounting statistics and those details are concerned, the number of polling stations. Now we have a release dated 10th October 2024, showing us from Mr. Tete pointing towards the number of polling stations mm. or registered polling stations of the Electoral Commission. Mm. And these are the fine details that I believe the letter from the NDC was asking for. Mm. But they are preempting ahead of time that the Electoral Commission should stop. They should do A, they should do B, they should do C. These are things that the Electoral Commission do naturally and we expect them to do. So when there is a statement coming from the Electoral Commission that they are not printing ballot papers now, they will have to go through with us in accordance with their due process and their mandate. Certainly, we are all for it. And we, well, Maliba, we are waiting um, the time that they will invite us and they will give us the, the, the criticism is that the NDC is putting the cart before the horse. The EC is an incorrigible, sneaky constitutional body. Why? The EC wrote a letter to the NDC 9th October dated. Today is what? 10th, eh? 11th. 11th. Two days ago. Two days ago. And this is the title. Request for party agents for the printing of notice of pool and ballot papers. This is the issue. Let me skip paragraph 1 of their letter and go to paragraph 2. This comes to inform you that the commission will commence printing of notice of poll and ballot papers for the 2024 general election from Friday 11th. Today is what? Friday 11th. You see the tips? Um, 2024. Eh? At the following printing press, and there are eight of them. These are easy. Mm. Notice of poll and print of ballot papers. Then you come back today, or the yesterday, saying that, oh, it is notice of poll, but we are not printing ballot papers today. What kind of organization is this? They are thieves. I cannot use any other word. What's your supposition why they decided to maintain only the notice of poll? The reason is simple. And I'm focused not following. You cannot have printing of ballot papers when you don't have a certified register. How many ballot papers are you going to? Uh, print because your ballots must be in tandem with your register. You don't have that yet. 
And you know the issues we raised with them. They said they were correcting it. This week we wrote to them that they should give us the correction. They said no. They we, they told us that it's two weeks. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky organization. You know what sneaky? Find from the register. And you know what an incorrigible organization is. Check check those words. It fits this organization. You don't do things this way. You cannot even do mathematics in your office. So if you don't if, if that is even when there are definitive figures. There are definitive figures and you can't do the mathematics. Now you don't have definitive figures. How are you going to do the mathematics? Mm. When we were registering, there were close of day figures. Every day, close of day figures were definite. Even with the definite figures, you couldn't do mathematics. Now you don't know how many people are in one police station. Because the police... Because of the discrepancies. Discrepancies. And you yourself admitted that there are dead bodies. Uh, dead, I say dead bodies. There are people on the register. Or even transfers made illegally. Legally. So you need to deal with all this. So, and then so, recently, so what, so what there I was think? a court that asked some uh, one thousand Mencia. people. Mencia. You've not done all these things. And you are writing so, to So what's your, what's your point? The NDC's position is that we should have had the corrected register out first before. Exactly. And then examined. Examined. And then we know that. So if we ask the EC today, what is the number of voters on the 2024 register going to elections? Can they tell us? They are a bunch of... It's okay. Breathe well. Because they are human beings. I don't just mm. want... They, they, are, they, are so, they are so incompetent. All right. So, Is so it deliberate? Is it deliberate? Is it deliberate what they are doing? And I heard good luck, Jonathan. And I want to disagree with you that the EC has the capacity to do the right things or the needful. They have the capacity, but we have people in there who are deliberately... Ensuring that the right things are not done. That's why uh, uh, Good Luck Jonathan should have spoken about. It's, it's, not, it's not good because he, Afuakwa, is a peace-loving person. I am a peace-loving person. I don't want to be carrying my luggage on my back, crossing the border. Afuakwa is better off being in opposition and staying in Ghana than carrying his uh, luggage and his mattress at the back crossing. So why do you want to keep Afuakwa in power by all means? The tide will change again. It's not the end of Ghana. Okay, Ghanians, Ghanians. I don't know the why. Tide will change I, again. I don't know why you use Ghanians a papa no, in opposition carrying. Uh, why? You, senior, the tide, the tide, the tide, the tide will yeah, always change. Reminds me of the Rwandan bishop. The, the tide will always. So why do you want to Roland. ensure that one political party? Professor. Stays in power. Senior, senior can stay in opposition and Dr. 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 Asante Ochre. Like and Dr. Asante Ochre was, 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 was given. And the nation will be in Asante Ochre was given some. Uh, uh, what was he doing? Trying to hold brief for the EC that this letter has come to clear the air. Dr. Asante Otri, I've read you this letter. They call us for balloting, to print ballot papers and notice of full. And they even said it was going to start today. The balloting of printing. The printing of ballot papers is going to start today. All right. Uh, just um, a minute each of this. What, what, do, you, what do you make of this revelation that apparently the letter that was sent to the parties and the NDC uh, through Amaliba, they have the copy, was supposed to have the two actions done together. And now we're only being told that it's only one action. It looks like this sort of, I don't know whether it's miscommunication or the posture of the EC tends to create the perceptions that are being espoused by Amaliba. Roland, are you referring to me? Yes, you. Just a minute, please. Okay. 60 seconds. Yeah, um, a lot of I think time. It's quite, it's, yeah, it's quite revealing um, listening to Mr. Amaliba on this particular letter. I have never trusted the EC, and I think that over the period, they've not been able to prove themselves trustworthy. Um, the only time that I started trusting them was especially the demonstration that they did, I think two weeks ago at the IPAC. And that equally came from the you know the actions and the scrutiny of the NDC in a very responsible manner, and so I think that once you are aware that you cannot trust this particular EC, and Afro Barometer data that came showed that Ghanaians don't trust the EC, and so all you need to do is to mark them boot for boot. That for me is the only means by which you will be able to ensure that whether you lose or you win, you will do that genuinely, and that is the best way to go. So they cannot in any way trust the EC, especially those who have even been appointed to to, to to head this particular place. It just does not exude okay. that kind of confidence that Ghanaians will have, to right. have in them.
But by and large, I think that after that IPAC, I've given them that much respect. And I'm giving the NDC more respect because if not for them, we wouldn't have had this particular register. But if you are putting the horse before the cart, the cart before the horse, I think that with respect to the EC, if indeed what Mr. Malaba, Mr. Malaba is saying is a truism, then I think that they still have, they still don't have to be trustworthy, mm. and they will have to ensure that they are vigilant with the processes before the elections are conducted. Okay, you, sixty uh, seconds for uh, you too. Uh, if, if, uh, it's all within uh, your sixty uh, seconds, so. uh, Doc, uh, respectfully. You remember that the electoral, the NDC told us that they have identified some 243,000 irregularities. During the IPAC meeting, were they able to produce even 10 of these irregularities that they, were, they, they, they told the whole people of this republic? The 15,000 uh, uh, transfer that has been done without is it, is it a pathway and those kind of things. Were they able to establish all these things? You see, we have one, one country and we cannot use political interest to destroy this beautiful country called Ghana. Let us leave the Electoral Commission to work in accordance with law. I believe should uh, the, the Electoral Commission have written a letter to the NDC, and the NDC has any doubts about it. They, they might have communicated. I have a role to play as far as the, 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 the workings of the Electoral Commission for my party is concerned. And I am not in the known of any such letter that has been sent to our party. Mm -hmm. So I believe that things must be done and must be done right. The Electoral Commission has so issued so an official uh, well, Maliba, who is representing the NDC, is lying. I cannot say he's lying. So what are you I saying? believe that due process must work. The EC has issued a notice. And the notice, this is not the first time the NDC is doing same. It's the first time the NDC is doing same. The 243,000 irregularities. Were they able to establish that when the, the IPAC meeting was telecast live for all of us sitting at our various homes and offices uh, uh, to watch? The media were present. CSOs were present. Were they able to put that on the table? Certainly. We cannot. We cannot continue this time yet. The NDC knows that they are losing these elections. They know whether Dr. Baumian is a weak candidate as being proposed by uh, my learned senior here, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Maliba, whether he's weak or not, the people of Ghana will decide. And I believe that the people of Ghana are voting for possibilities. They are voting for the bold solutions that will propel Ghana into the fourth industrial revolution. And they are not going for uh, they are going for solutions that will be able to put our country ahead of others in the international system that ghana will be a nation of prosperity wealth and progress a minute well, i gave him 60 seconds well ghanians, seconds. yeah ghanians don't wash their faces upside down ghanians know the party that made life better for them and Ghanaians would vote for John Dramani Mahama. The Ghanaians will not experiment again when they experimented with a driver, let alone a driver mate who has no license. So that one is a given. But what is more critical is the conduct of the Electoral Commission. And the Electoral Commission should have by now know that the NDC has all has got all its antennas up and surveilling. So by now they should have lowered their conduct of trying to be sneaky and trying to be incorrigible. Because from day one, the NDC was matching you boot for boot. Your mathematics, your simple mathematics, you can't. And when they when they catch them, then they say, Oh, we were using coral draw. That's why the mathematics went wrong. Didn't we say that some names were deleted in the register? And they said, that, oh, the names are not deleted. They are found in a... Actually, we even opened the phone lines and got people yes. who, who... who and he's sitting there talking the way he's talking. Us, yeah. they, we said that the names, the names were deleted. And what they said was that, oh, no, the names can be found in a transfer list. The name can be found in uh, 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 the another list. Transfer list and the... Uh, something list missing missing people's list no it's a, tr it's a transfer list and uh, yeah, there's a missing there's something yes or misplaced people yeah something list oh. and i asked myself on the day of election if you go to vote are they going to be dealing with the reg register or they are going to be dealing with a transfer list and you see they would have trained and i told i said i told you people here they would have trained their agents to say that when somebody is going to the transfer list to find his name Oppose it. And that was the game plan. So, an EC that cannot do mathematics, an EC 
that has that has uh, 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 announced presidential elections more than three times would you be trusting that ec all right when the next time the EC, that ec is going to conduct elections okay this EC is thank you very much that's focus all of you. EC. and uh, mr Fakwa as well so as Mali, but thank you very much um dr santiotri uh thank you very much as well for um coming to help us as this as well you were you you were saying something um i i think that <clears throat> When we go about saying that the NDC said the, the 240-something thousand irregularities here and there, um, I think that if the current status of the register is anything to go by, it is through the, the scrutinous eye of the NDC that has brought us this far. This because I ask myself, the, the MPP, you have an electoral directorate, you could not find any of these errors. Is it the case that it was going to benefit you or not? That is even beside the point. But I um, think that, by and large, if you listen to the director of uh, IT at EC when he was presenting, he accepted, right, most of the, if not all, most of the errors that they identified. All right. And accordingly, they well, had corrected. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri. Now, let me say happy birthday to Parkwesi Shandov, a uh, journalist. Uh, and then also it's your birthday. So yesterday you celebrated your birthday. Happy birthday to you. I have a couple, about just uh, three or four messages. This one is coming from Chairman Prosper, who says that looking at the situation of the Galamse with the president looking on and the utterances of his ministers and members of parliament shows clearly that the status quo allowed people to pollute our water bodies and flout mining laws. So what are, are they doing? What they are doing is just cosmetic a gimmick just to um, uh, create the, the situation and the atmosphere that something is being done. Now, uh, Stephen Pen from WA says, the measures being implemented uh, shows that the president has already checked out. Very cosmetic. <laughs> I like the way people are using cosmetic today. All right. Ghanaians need to have Galamse banned. And then the last one is coming from... Kofi Kwating Ameni says, ah, is Mr. Fakwa saying he and Dr. Baumia just resurfaced from Kosomokai? Kosomokai? Why didn't the, they implement all these solutions now? And they say that an election will have to take place. And then, uh, let me say good, and so good morning to Richmond Sechi. You work with the whole technical university. Good morning to you as well. Hajia, um, Hajia of the Sun Foundation in the Northern um, Ghana area. Happy birthday to you from your birthday and, and all those people. Also, um, uh, also let's uh, look at Dewa. Dewa 539 is your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash, pick up the range of the numbers and then win big 20 times, 400 times, as well as 40 times your stake, and win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and also on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early bet, they also love day watch up money. So that's uh, also making sure that you down at 10 a.m., get the draw done, choose the range of the numbers 1 to 39 all throughout, and you can also play the game online. Dewa-NLA.com is a site for you to get a log on to and play this uh, succinctly. Please make sure that you increase your chances of winning. And then also, um, landlord Borga D line also sent the message wishing you all the best for the day as well. We're taking a break. We'll be back with more.